by Acts 13. Uh, this morning, uh, I intend to uh, preach about it and lower the boom. What is the boom, by the way? Lower the boom. What's the boom? The boom is the far as it goes across the bottom of the sail. Okay, well, when I think of the boom, I think of the boom of a crane on a ship. So I, I always think of shipping. Yeah. And the boom that moves on and off the cargo. I think that goes back to the sailing ship days, that too. Yeah. But the boom, there's a there's a part on the, the lowest spar? Well, the bottom of the sail is weighted by the boom. Oh, it is. Yeah. I'll look it up. Oh, look it up? No, well, no, there's, there, there are different meanings. So the boom is yeah, the boom. on a spar, the lowest of the mast? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because when they, when they raise and lower the sail, that boom is going up and down. The top boom is going up and down. Oh, it's to raise and lower the sail. So here. Yeah. A boom is a long spar or pole used to extend the bottom of, a certain, of certain sails. Or it can be a spar that extends upwards at an angle from the foot of a mast, from which there are suspended objects to be lifted. What? Oh, okay. uh, uh, wait a minute. And, and, uh, from a spar to move well, objects? It's saying. It could be part of a crane, a boom crane. There is yeah, a boom crane. There's a boom of a crane, but it, tr it, it kind of morphed into that. Yeah, yeah. The original meaning is a uh, is the bar. Even your reading lights at the piano, that's essentially on a boom. Well, that's true. Yeah, you're right. That is a boom. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. So originally, it is the sail. Right. So, yeah, so if you're if you get on if you're going to be in the navy, they probably have training ships. And I don't know if in the navy they required any more, but at one time you had to memorize a lot of stuff. Yeah. You have to probably memorize everything on that thing, on that boom. Okay, so maybe today I lower the boom, and, and so on. You know, I mean, uh, this life is going to be over one day, folks, and uh, we will be held accountable. Anyway, uh, Acts 13, we are uh, at verse 14. Uh, and when they departed from Perga, we'll end, we'll begin right where we ended. They came to Antioch to, in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Uh, that was the custom. And the custom carries over today, I mean customarily. Now this is not the Sabbath day, but customarily we call it the Sabbath day. And uh, so they met on the first day that we Christians do. That's the resurrection day. And so we meet on Sunday where uh, law keepers that call themselves Christian, they're not. And the, and the Jews, they still would meet on the Sabbath day, but the custom. And the reading of the law and the prophets, it was a, a weekly ritual. The, the verses we use is Luke 4 where our Lord is called on to uh, read. And that is the story when they make an effort to uh, kill him and throw him off the brow of a hill or cast him headlong off. And he passes through the midst of them. And that is one of his uh, first miracles uh, that he performed. And, and we did discuss that briefly. You know, how did he pass through? Does he blind them? Does he become invisible? Are they just oblivious? How, how does he do it? it? It's unimportant in the end. It really, probably really is unimportant. Otherwise, if it was important for us to know, he would uh, reveal it to us. And maybe he'll reveal to us later on how he does that. And where else does he do that? He did it there. Anybody else recall? I think it's John 8 when they're arguing or they're debating. Uh, he says, I am that I am. Where, where are they located? In the temple. Anybody recall? They're located in the treasury. And he passes through the midst of them because it was not his time yet. 
does he become invisible? What kind of miracle is it? It is a miracle. That the, uh, uh, there, I, could there be another, there, there may be another one that he does. And depending on how many there are, there could be something in that. That's two, two cases. Can somebody think of a, another one offhand where he does that? You know, where it says it was not his time and they couldn't deliver him up. They, uh, they pick up stones to stone him, you know, and, they, and he had, you know, escapes. Father, now bless our lesson today in that it would nourish the soul, increasing our faith. Now in Christ's name, amen. Uh, verse 16, when Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, after the reading of the law, verse 15, after the reading of the law, the prophets of the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, do you have any word? Oh, they invite Paul to speak. Yeah, I didn't include that in there, but uh, yeah, we're, we, we've already kind of outlined this whole thing, and now we're going back and doing some review here, is uh, that would be equivalent to being for you and I, where would that be? Where would we be? We wouldn't be in the synagogue. Traditionally, then, where would we be here in this part of the country? Uh, you got saved. Where would you still be? Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. You're well known to the priest. And, and here you have somebody who's one of the priests he gets saved, and he's well known by the priest of the church, and he's a, a friend of his. They probably went to school together, and he invites him to, to uh, preach. Do you have any words to say? What an opportunity, right? And once, once you uh, exercise that opportunity once or twice or three times, and you exercise that, then what usually happens? <laughs> you exercise your leg. <laughs> you exercise your legs. You you you, be, you be, get kicked out, run out. Uh, you're not invited anymore. I mean, it's over. And it's kind of like when you're invited to uh, 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 the birthday party, and then you find out that you know they serve. When do they serve the cake and the ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, but when? What time of day do they serve that? On a Sunday. Five o'clock on Sunday. At five o'clock. Right? And so that you left, and then why are you leaving? And uh, now, uh, in our family, what would happen when we would go to the birthday party, what do they, out of courtesy, then what do they do? When do they serve the cake and the ice cream? 3.30. At, say? 3.30. At 2.30 or 3 o'clock. Out of courtesy, they change the time. The cake and the ice cream and the opening of the packages are early, become earlier so that participation. And then they learn what not to mention. They learn not to ever mention the name Jesus. Because then the door opens up and then, and then you have the opportunity to say something. So, but you exercise your, your opportunity when it comes, and Paul certainly is, is is he has an audience, he takes advantage of that. He takes advantage of it. So men of Israel, the Jews, ye that fear God, uh, and, and ye that fear God, the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, uh, verse 18, in about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. Uh, God is long suffering. Uh, he puts up with a lot in verse 18, but in the end, uh, there will come an end uh, uh, to this. Uh, suffering in, uh, in being patient, but suffering in allowing, uh, 40 years, allowed he their manners in the uh, wilderness. He suffers as God is long suffering. <clears throat> Exodus 34, go there. Let's look up a couple of these. Exodus 34. Anybody warm? I'm starting to get warm. 34.6, the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, 
Oh, uh, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. All right, so he's very patient and he suffers through that. In other words, grieved as he waits patiently. Uh, go uh, to Numbers 14. That is a fruit of the Spirit to be long suffering. And then we concluded uh, with meekness. What are the last two? Meekness and temperance. Meek, a meek person. They're, they're not easily uh, provoked. And they don't lose their temper quickly. They are long-suffering. They'll put up with it and, and so on without losing the temper. Numbers 14, verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy. An example of this, Genesis 5, Genesis 5, 26. Uh, in verse 26, Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of uh, Methuselah were 960 and nine years. So he's the longest living man. And then what does his name mean? When he is dead, it will be sent. And so what is sent when Methuselah dies? And that is the flood. Probably the moment he died is when the waters were broken up from beneath the earth, the rains came, and so on. So he is very patient. So this period or time of grace that you and I are experiencing is the two days or the 2,000 years. And uh, God is very uh, patient and because he wants more people to come into, into the ark into, and uh, get saved and trust in the blood of Jesus. All right, Acts uh, 13, back there, verses 17 through 22. <clears throat> All through there is the Old Testament history. Uh, the Bible, it is, it is, I did say this the other day, I don't know if I said it in preaching or not, but the Bible is a, a, a history book. Uh, what else is it? I think we do it... I think we do C-A-L as the rhyme, rhyme in that. Historical, practical, I think we do five of them or so. Anybody can think of any? Doctrinal, practical, you know, for everyday life. Devotional. Devotional, that's a good one. Salvational, I don't know, that, that, is that a word? <laughs> Uh, I think we do at least five words. It, it is historical. It's a historical book. It is practical. It is doctrinal. It is, what did you say? Devotional. Devotional. Prophetical. Oh, that's a good one. Prophetical. Scientific. Oh. It, it is a scientific book. Even though it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there for science, science, as, it, as in a science book at, in school. It's not that kind of science. But it is a scientific book. There's no doubt about it. So it, it fills a lot of different roles, other than just uh, the story of our Lord from cover to cover, and salvation from cover to cover. There are other things that you can glean out of the Word of God. And it is a historical book. So Old Testament history is revealed. Verse 23, of this man's seed hath God greatest promise raised unto Israel the Savior, Jesus the seed, the fulfilling of Genesis 3.15, of the woman's seed. Uh, David's seed according to the flesh. If we go to Romans 1, Romans 1, verses 1 through 4. It, and, uh, <clears throat> the servant of Jesus Christ called me an apostle, separated on the gospel of God, which he had promised the four by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made the seed of David, of the seed of David according to the flesh, declared to be the Son of God with power according to the 
Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. All right, uh, the seed of David according to the flesh, and he is God's child, uh, as I said, that uh, verse 4 of Romans 1. Verse 4, declared to be the Son of God. Acts 4.27. Alright, seed of the flesh and, and the you know the seed of, of God, the Holy Spirit. 4.27. Of truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod, Pont Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together. But the holy child, so uh, he is uh, of the flesh and of, uh, of, of God. All right, raised, um, verse 23, back to verse 23 of Acts 13, of this man's seed hath God appointed his friend. Raised unto Israel a Savior, raised for a purpose, a Savior. Just as Pharaoh was raised for a purpose. Exodus 9, 16, we could go there. Uh, as far as the word is concerned, uh, most people, uh, 9, 16, in very deep for this cause have I raised thee up. The idea is that, that uh, uh, Pharaoh was raised up for a purpose. Uh, and most people go through life <clears throat> either uh, not fulfilling their purpose or um, not, uh, knowing. not knowing of their purpose. They don't know their purpose. So we're, we're going to do Galatians chapter 1 to, tonight for our sermon this e evening. Uh, and uh, Galatians 1, sometimes Paul does, sometimes he does this, sometimes he does <coughs> If we go there, uh, if we go there, let, let's go to Galatians 1. We got a whole ton of points tonight about Galatians. Uh, if we, we want to find this purpose, Paul's not afraid to say his purpose right from the start. He, he knows, and, and when you, a person knows their purpose, uh, it helps him get out of bed in the morning. It, that could be help. It says, Paul, an apostle. That's the first four, uh, three words. Paul, an apostle. So he knows his purpose. He states his purpose. All right? So uh, the purpose, uh, raised unto Israel, a Savior, Jesus. All right? So raised for a purpose, a Savior. So people, a lot of times people don't know or understand that they're not even looking for a reason for a purpose. If people don't have a purpose, what do they normally, well, it drives them into what as a general rule? Yeah, I should say as a general rule. People can go without a purpose and still go about, but if they really start thinking about it, well, what's my purpose? They can get, they can get down you know, without a purpose. They can get uh, depressed. Uh, people need a purpose. A purpose. Uh, you know, they write songs about this stuff. Uh, people get a purpose. Uh, uh, they, they have no purpose. And then, oh, in country western songs, they, they get a, a purpose. When five little fingers put their hand in, in the mother's hand. You know, now I got a purpose. It's for the child. There's a purpose in life. But Jesus was raised for a purpose. All right? Just as Pharaoh was raised for a purpose. Verses 24 and 25. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all people, John the Baptist, um, uh, and John fulfilled his course. He said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. He fulfilled his purpose. We'll probably have that. Uh, in, uh, in, in this, that'll be in the sermon this morning. He fulfilled his purpose. What happened when after he fulfilled his purpose? Yeah, he got his, his neck cut off. And uh, people uh, need to, you know, like, like this building, there's so many different things in this building, and each one of these different things fulfill a purpose. Now, we, we know that this is a building physical building, it's not a spiritual building, but God's house 
that he's building us is a spiritual house. And it would be like this building. There's different things or the, the people of God that make up the church, they, sh they need to fulfill their purpose. Uh, <clears throat> what basically, I guess, holds us together if we think about what holds the place up other than the foundation? What holds all the wood together? Nails. Nails. Uh, what, when, when you drop a nail, now, now let's not put the nails in a gun. Let's go back 50 years. Uh, they're not in a gun. Now we know the nails are in a gun today. And they go, to choo to choo to choo right? But let's not put the nails in a gun. Let's put the nails in. You, you wear this belt, the nails go in the, in the belt. belt. Uh, if you drop a nail, you know, what are you putting them up with? Uh, I, I, I don't need a 10 penny, a 20 penny, what, what puts these, these are two by sixes in here in trusses. What would you, now I know it's a plate that holds a truss together. But if you were nailing that together, what penny nail are you using? A 10, a 15, a 20? The higher the number, the bigger, the heavier the gauge. Pardon? Smaller. No, not nails. Not nails, it goes opposite with wire gauge. Yeah, wire gauge, the, the greater the number, the smaller the screw, the smaller the... No, 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 wait a minute, it's... With, with screws, the bigger the number, the bigger diameter. That's right, screws, what, what is it, the smaller the number, the heavier the gauge. Uh, it, it, that's, that's wire. Wire or sheet stock, yeah. roll stock, yeah. it's opposite. 10 gauge wire is heavier than 16. That's right, it, it goes opposite. So don't ask me how those systems are developed. But one, one goes opposite. But nails and screws, <coughs> the higher the number, the higher the gauge. Yeah, well, let's say you're using 20. It, there's a zillion nails in here. Yeah. If you dropped one, would you bend over and pick it up, or are you sweeping it up at the end of the day? You're, you're going to sweep it up at the end of the day. Now, I tend to, even if you bother. But what I, I, here's what I tend to do. I, I've been on different construction sites. If it's messy, now my shop, I will admit my shop is a mess. But if the shop is messy, if the, if the house is messy, I get nervous. That, that makes me nervous. If I'm studying and all my books are surrounding me, I'm okay. I know when I'm done, I'm gonna put them all away and everything goes in its place. Man, it makes me nervous. So I have to keep a construction site clean. Uh, not to make, uh, not to, to keep me from getting nervous and for people's sake, you know. But the, the nail, it, you may say it's not important. It's not very important you drop one. But it, in the end, is it important? Every nail that's in here does their purpose and fulfills their function. Right? And it is important. And they need to fulfill that. Uh, where are we at here? John the Baptist fulfilled his purpose. Verse 27, uh, They that dwell through with the rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which read every Sabbath, they, they had fulfilled them in condemn, condemning him. They knew him not. Uh, if they knew him, you know, it does state that they knew him. Yeah, I could go to other verses that would allude that they, uh, when he gives the parable of the vineyard, and, the, and the, the, they're going to kill the son, those Pharisees knew they, that Jesus was speaking. It's, it states it. They, they perceived that they, they spoke the parable against them. Did they know Jesus was Jesus? Or not? According to that verse. Verse 27, did the, did the Pharisees know that Jesus was the Son of God? According to that verse, you're right. It, does, it, it says that they don't know. And so there's other verses to support that. Acts 3, verse 17. Pretty sure these two verses support that. And I think it actually states in the one they would not have... They would not have killed him. And now, brethren, I want that, that through ignorance he did it, as did also your rulers. They were ignorant of the fact that Jesus was who he said he was. 1 Corinthians 2. But their hearts are hardened, and they still will believe. 
at uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verse 8. Here, it actually states that they would not have crucified the Lord, which none of the princes of this world knew, or had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord's glory. They wouldn't have. So they had, to, they had to remain ignorant. They had to stay in the dark about this uh, for Jesus to fulfill his will. Right? They had to do that. They knew now. Uh, verse 28, And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. Sounds like politics. You know, uh, we, we've got this... Uh, We've got this uh, a Russian collusion going on. There's a general who's going to go to jail. What, what's his name? I can't think. Flynn. Of Flynn. Oh, Flynn. Flynn. He serves 33 years in the military. I'm not putting him up on a pedestal. I don't mean to do that. And then you got another one. Uh, the flip side of this: she goes and they smash their blackberries. They destroy. They destroy the computers and the hard drive. They delete uh, tens of thousands of email covering themselves. The FBI permits them to do this, to destroy evidence. They don't record the interview with Hillary. They don't record this. Apparently, it's not even recorded. They proclaim her innocent in their memo before they in, even inter interview anybody. I mean, it's like there's two different... Well, is there any difference here? You know, they found him not guilty, but what did they do? They still nailed him to the cross. Railroad. So it's nothing new, verse 28. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. Now we could we could get upset about it and say, well, there's two tiers of uh, justice. There's, there's one for you and I and one for her. And there's two tiers of justice. But you see, if it's not so, well then, I have to say that this, to justify it or make myself feel better, that this is just getting it ready for what? <clears throat> what are we getting ready for? The big lie. The big lie. Yeah, 2 uh, Thessalonians 2. The big lie. <coughs> we have to get ready for the big lie, for the Antichrist to come on the scene, for us to be raptured, to get it all together so that the, uh, everybody believes the big lie. Right? And then so that we can move towards the end of the, this age. And so, um, and God will uh, perform that. Will perform that. All right, Pilate in Luke 23, 4. I, I don't feel let to go there. Uh you know, this is, a, this is, and I'm not saying it's bad preaching. I mean, this stuff is preached like at Easter time when uh, Jesus is found innocent. All of these statements here are, are from the people that condemned him, had him uh, uh, crucified, all find him uh, uh, not guilty. Pilate declares it in Luke 23. I, I find no fault in this man, Herod. Uh, it, it, in Luke 23, 14 and 15, it does state it that Herod found him not guilty. Judas, I have portrayed what? The innocent blood, right? The centurion. Sure, truly, this was the Son of God. The Pharisees in Mark 15, verse 10. Yeah, I know, I'm not familiar with that. Mark 15, verse 10. And we'll go back and look up that Herod. Mark 15, verse 10. Uh, for he knew that the chief priest, oh, he had delivered him for envy. Uh, so the, the motive wasn't that Jesus was guilty. The motive was that Jesus, they were envious of, that, uh, of, of his following. And there were, that was their motive. Their motive. Uh, showing that he, he wasn't guilty. Uh, their motive wasn't was it because they found him guilty. All right, here at Luke 23, uh, Luke 23, and a pilot also uh, says that in another place about uh, the motive there was out of envy. Uh, Luke 23, uh, 14 and 15. 
uh, in verse 15, it's, it's on, uh, Pilate states it on Herod's behalf. No, nor yet Herod, for I send him you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. So Pilate says it on Herod's behalf that Herod found him not guilty. So I'll find Christ not guilty. All right. Uh, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. Oh yeah, uh, even though they were found not guilty, now we already read Acts 427, even though they found him not guilty, yet all rose up against him. Acts chapter 4 verse 27. 4 verse 27. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, here we have the list, Herod, Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel. So you've got the rulers, the, Jew, and the Jews and the Gentiles, rising up against him. So uh, technically what we say in there, we lump ourselves in that. All of, in other words, it kind of covers all of mankind. And you're not going to find you. uh, Jew and Gentile, that, that covers everybody, uh, rise up against him. Verse 29, when they had fulfilled all that was written, now, he's just giving a historical account of all that had happened. When they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. All right, they took him down, and that would be the fulfilling of the law. Whether or not they, they realized it or not that they were fulfilling the law, he was uh, crucified uh, with uh, two others uh, uh, by, by the uh, Romans. Are, are the Romans concerned about keeping the law? Of course not. They're not concerned about it. But God's going to have them fulfill the law of the Son of God in, in that they would take him down from the cross. Uh, Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made cursed for us, for his written curses everyone that hangs on a tree. So uh, he is hung on a tree, it's, and it does state tree. Deuteronomy 21, Deuteronomy 21, verse uh, 23. His body shall not, as far as the law is concerned, his body shall not remain all night upon a tree. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged, hanged is a curse to God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth the for an inheritance. So he was to be taken down. It was not to remain all night. And when does night start for them? Their day starts at 6 o'clock. So he's taken down. Uh, he dies at 3. So between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, what are the events that happen? Let's see. Uh, midnight, uh, the darkness comes at 12. Crucifixion's at 9 in the morning. The darkness comes at 12. He hangs them uh, in darkness for the three hours. He gets up the ghost at 3, makes his final statements. And then what takes place between 3 and 6? The centurion says, "Truly, this was a uh, this was the son of God that takes place. An earthquake, earthquakes take place. The veil is rent. Tombs were open. The tombs were open. Joseph of Arimathea. In other words, you got three hours here, folks. They're not texting. <clears throat> People are resurrected." People are resurrected, they're walking the streets, and not just and not just for that moment, but for probably a few days until he rises from the dead, he takes captivity captive. But for those three hours, Joseph of Arimathea, he's got to get back over to Pilate and beg for the body of Jesus to take it down from the cross. He inquired, he then in turn has to inquire of the of the soldiers whether or not he was dead, because he was shocked that he was already dead. Remember, he was like, wow, he couldn't believe he already was dead. So that had to take place. Then Nicodemus, we assume he was there the whole time. He helps Joseph of Arimathea take it down. They bring the spices. I would assume they, they didn't bring the uh, spices in the wrapping along with them. They had to go get that. They take him down, they wrap him up, and then they place him in, in the nearest grave, which was... Joseph of Arimathea's, wasn't it? It was his grave. Yep. 
So you've got to give them three hours to do that. You know, the three hours to get them in before the night, the six o'clock. And that cuts, that cuts enough slack for, for all those events to take place. Now, God could do it instantly, but come on, all practicality. And God's a practical. He's practical. So it gives him three hours for all of these events to take place. All right, so they take him down. Verse 30, but God raised him from the dead. All right, who raised him from the dead? God raised him up from the dead. Uh, John uh, 10, verse 18, Christ him, raised himself up. Um, I have the power to lay, lay down my life, and I have the power to take it up again. Right? Isn't that what he states? John 10, where he's the good shepherd, where um, I and my father are one. Right? All through John 10 there. I am the, he's, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take, take my life again. Uh, uh, you know, I and my father are one. Isn't that all that takes place there in John 10 in the, those discussions? In Romans 8, 11, the Holy Spirit raises up Christ. Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. All right, so God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all raised Jesus from the dead. Because you cannot separate the Trinity. Yes? In verses 29 and 30. That's the gospel message right there. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, and I did not include, did I include that? Yeah, the fulfillment was written. They took him down from the tree. Uh, did you say 29? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Did, and I didn't include that. Or maybe. You know, in the, um, I think I included that. Uh, the point of the message on, on my page 12, the point of the message, the death of Christ, 27 and 28, the burial of Christ, verse 29, and the resurrection of Christ, verse 30 through 37. It, it, is, it, it is in the notes. It is in the notes. And, and we're just kind of, that was how we concluded last week. Okay, so the resurrection is, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection is the entire gospel passage. All right, he's seen, uh, verse 31, he was seen many days of them which came up from uh, Galilee to Jerusalem who are witnesses unto the people. How many days? How, what, how many days were the many days? Forty. Forty days. And then you got ten days because he said you wait for me till, uh, Till Pentecost, that was an additional ten days to fulfill the fifty days. See many days. Uh, Acts one, verses one through nine. Acts one. Uh, uh, seen of them forty days. There it is in verse three. To whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. All right, uh, in, in, in that verse, passion and infallible, I believe those two words I've underlined, I think those are the only two places that occurs in the Bible. Passion is only one time in the Bible, and infallible, I believe. Check it out, it's one time in the Bible. It does not occur any more than that. Passion and infallible. And passion meaning the suffering of Christ. Now if you look at these words, it's a general rule. Sometimes what we say is the meaning. Sometimes it's the biblical meaning first. And then how we normally use it after. And then sometimes it's reversed. And then they'll say the Bible meaning. Now, And we're talking about your Webster. Webster version. All right. Seen many days. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 5 through 8. After the, res after the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel is given in verses 3 and 4. It then says to 5 through 8, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. 
After that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain under this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, and certainly this is after the, after the ascension, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. All right, that would have been after the ascension. He was seen there. All right, uh, seen many days. All right, back if you would to Acts 13. Acts 13. Verse thir uh, 33. God hath fulfilled the same unto, unto us their children, and then he hath raised up Jesus. Again, as is written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. All right, uh, now the Jehovah's Witnesses would go there. Uh, what, what groups go there to show or try to prove that Jesus was a created being? The Jehovah's Witnesses. And then the other is uh, what other group? The Mormons. I think it's the Mormons that make Jesus and the devil brothers. It's, this is bizarre. It is just bizarre. I mean, I mean, the way Bruce would put it is is really kind of funny. Bruce Musselman, he says it's like the sign above the above the blacksmith shop. This he has some phrases he would say uh, over and over. But when you hear it, I've never heard it other than. And he said, a lot of twisting and turning going on around there. Here's the phrase above the uh, blacksmith shop. A lot of twisting and turning going on around there. They got me. Not created, for Christ is the creator. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Why don't we go there? I, I did say Corinthians, Colossians. I'm sorry. Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. In verse 14, what is removed in the New Bibles? Just for the fun of it. In verse 14, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. What's removed? Anybody recall? Pardon? Blood. Through his blood. That part is removed in the New Bibles. Verses 16 and 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. All right, so Jesus is the creator. And uh, uh, he's revealed these things. Jesus said, you know, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you revealed this to the, uh, things are revealed to who? Uh, I don't know if he calls us simple. Babes. No, I don't think he says base. But does he? Is it base? The base? It could be. Babes. babes. Oh, babes. Babes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, uh, uh, babes. That's you're right. It is babes. And had and had. Uh, he doesn't say hidden and kept them from the uh, you know the so-called smart ones. Mm -hmm. They're smarter than anybody else. The intellects. I didn't see many days begotten me so much that uh, it, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know where I heard this from, but I heard from a preacher, it's like Presbyterian, they've studied themselves what? Stupid. They studied themselves stupid. You know, I repeat these things, but I hear it from somebody else. I, I don't remember these things. So it must be, so it must point to Christ's earthly birth. The begotten is his earthly birth. Matthew 1, and we'll pick it up here next week. We're, we're over here. Uh, that he gave his only one begotten son, John 3, 16, John 1, 14. He was the only begotten son, Matthew 1. And, and we'll look up those first. We'll start right there and pick this up next week. Preaching in 15 minutes, Father, we'll sit down in Christ's name. Amen.